I think about dying a lot. Because I'm not going to age gracefully. And I have a daughter now. Do you realize how many times my daughter's going to hear, That's your dad! <laughs> Growing up with me as a dad is kind of like growing up having Curly as your father. <laughs> Not oodles of prestige behind it, you know. And I'll be like, I'll be like, I'll be like going, how come your little friends never come in the house? <laughs> what, you embarrassed me, old man? I tell you, that, they're acting crazy. I paid for that Corvette in the driveway, Susie Q. Get in the house. We're going to watch Police Academy 50. Yes, yes, again. I have no idea what will date my daughter. I mean, you know... I mean, these little yuppie guys, hello, is your daughter home? And I'm going, how old are you, 13? When I was your age, I had cirrhosis. <laughs> so I'm reading the people, and then I see Parker Stevenson. Remember that guy at Hardy Boys? Right? <laughs> full page ad with the park. The park cat is full page ad. And it says, Parker Stevenson is his head shot, looking pretty. You know, he looked like date bait still. And he's like, I support the NRA. And it really hit me, man. Because, like, when I'm in the voting booth, I, before I vote on any issues, I go, wait, wait, how did the Hardy Boys feel on this one? <laughs> you know, they really, you know, they really sway my opinion on the current topics. Toxic waste. How did the new Gidget cast feel? <laughs> I've been on these, uh, I, I travel around a lot lately. I, I, I'm on, like, I, I take all these, like, Buddy Holly killing kind of plays. Like this. <laughs> Get in these little, Eeeh. I was on a runway during the first earthquake, right? And the whole car goes, the, the, I mean, the whole plane is shaking, and I go, piece of shit. <laughs> myself, I prefer flying on the bigger birds. The DC-10s. No, 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 no. Oh, the, um, during that, the second earthquake, I, I became my father. That's how I reacted. I was sleeping in bed, and suddenly, I don't know. Doesn't that sound just like an earthquake if you squint? Close your eyes. Let me recreate that moment for you. Frightening. The whole place is shaking. And I wake up, and I wake up not as me. I wake up, I am my dad. I wake up in the middle of the earthquake, and I go, What the hell's going on in there? <laughs> like, I'm such a control freak. I actually thought I could yell at an earthquake. <laughs> and it would stop. Go, what the hell is... Do I have to take off my belt? <laughs> Keep it down in there. Man. Yeah. If I was going to commit suicide, um, I understand that it's healthy to talk about it. And, you know, see, like, if you guys, it's so fucked up nowadays. If you guys heard me talk about suicide on stage, and if you killed yourself, you could sue your parents or family, could sue me, saying, well, Goldway planted the seed. <laughs> the Hardy Boys told him, don't kill yourself. <laughs> It was Goldway pushed him over the edge. So stupid. Ozzy Osbourne. My son bought an Ozzy Osbourne record, then he killed himself. Well, maybe your divorce and being on heroin might have something to do with it. I think we ought to nail William Shakespeare right now for Romeo and Juliet. You know? If I was going to kill myself, I'd go to like... You know, I go to I go to one of those NRA guys' house. I'd break in. I would take his gun, right? And I'd wake him up and I'd say, "Um, I want you to explain this 
boom! And blown my head off. See the beauty of that? I'm dead. His bedroom is good. And the cops come and he goes, well, um, this is kind of a funny story, officer. He came in here and he blew his head off. Pope was here, excellent tour. Say what you want, but there's something wild when you get in an audience with the Pope. I got thrown out for a heck line. <laughs> dude, kumbaya, dude! <laughs> Jovi! Hey, where are you going with that beach ball? That's my beach ball! <laughs> Remember that guy who clipped the Pope? What was that? Guy shot the Pope. Now he now the Pope travels with that like uh, that sneeze guard around him. You know? <laughs> Does a blessing still count if there's like ten inches of formica between you and him? <laughs> Maybe he's just like blessing himself. Bing 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 bing. I'm getting holier. Ah! <laughs> oh, you know he's tooling around in that thing. That guy shot the Pope. I would give an enormous amount of cash. Find out, like, what was? What was the conversation he had with the man who shot him? I mean, I've done a lot of stupid things, but, like, what did they talk about? It's like, ah, how you doing? <laughs> You're still not mad, are you? <laughs> I thought you were a deer. <laughs> Open Pope season. <laughs> I was raised in the Catholic Church. I'm overqualified to poke fun at it. I used to think it rained because I masturbated. <laughs> I think that's the early signs of an enormous ego. You know, me bopping my baloney can change the weather of an entire community, but so I had a big ego, you know. I just envision like Willard Scott calling the house. So did he touch it or what? <laughs> I've become like the, the, the punk Don Rickles. You know, I make fun of everyone and then I meet them. So I've been sucking some big dick lately. <laughs> Every week it's a new person. And I go, I was just kidding. What's <laughs> up, Sylvester Stallone? I, I, um... My manager said that I'd never talk about him on stage again, so I've always, that motivates me a little bit more to bring up his fucking name. Um, Cause Stallone said he wanted to kill me. I'll get into that later. But um, I talked about how he didn't go to Nam. He went to Sweden and taught girls uh, soccer during the Vietnam War. And then he makes a billion dollars off of this war. And I was watching Rambo 2 on a plane and he says, you don't even need to rent the headphones because you can hear it. The you know it's bleeding through the. It's like, ah, incoming yo duh. You know so. <laughs> There's like women that look like Aunt B are behind me going kill those fucking goddamn pinkos. <laughs> I'm cool on a plane until Zuma breaks out into a rousing chorus of La Bamba. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the guy in the Twilight Zone movie. There's a man on the wing in this plane. There's a man on the wing. So Stallone says, do we win this time? That's what he said in the movie. Do we win this time? And I go, what? What are you talking about? The girls' soccer championships? <laughs> and then he made a porno movie. And if you have the opportunity to see it, you got to see it. They re-released it. It's called Italian Stallion. My manager took it away because I said I was going to show it on stage. And, uh, <laughs> he found it at my house. He's going, who gave you this? It was like, who gave the gun to the baby? You know, <laughs> Who gave you this? They're going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> my high-powered manager, Ruben Kincaid. And, uh, <laughs> so, so, they, so, so in this movie, Stallone smokes, Stallone smokes a lot of gang, and then he starts shaking his moneymaker. He's like doing this, he's doing this wiggly dance. He's doing it, and he's, uh, he's smoking dope, and you see his dick, and then he's doing. It's a really, really, way funnier than anything I will ever do on stage. <laughs> 
I could not touch that performance. It was thumbs up, you know. I remember when Burglar came out, I was watching, um, there was a movie I was in with Whoopi Goldberg, and I was watching it. Thank you, that's, that's about everybody who saw it. <laughs> Obviously, you're on the same flight. <laughs> and um, so what was weird was that uh, I, was, uh, I was watching Bill Harris and Rex Reed doing at the movies. First, you know, like, uh, so, and uh, Bill Harris goes, uh, I didn't like the movie, but I thought Bob Goldthwait was funny. And Rex Reed goes, you thought Bob Goldthwait was funny? <laughs> Bill Harris goes, well, yeah, in the theater, I saw it, and the people were clapping during some of his scenes. Oh, uh, uh, they, were, they were booing in my theater. <laughs> you know what, I really hurt, because... I'd like to meet Rex and say, you know, I saw that review, and it really hurt, because, like, um... <laughs> Out of all the judges on the gong show, you were like always my favorite man. <laughs> you know, because cause he could judge talent on that show, let me tell you. So uh, my HBO special went on and Stallone kept calling. Everywhere I went, I got those little pink memos. It said Sylvester Stallone. I'm not making it up. Sylvester Stallone called, and then it said, we'll call you back. <laughs> and I figured, you know, he just wanted to shoot the shit, you know. <laughs> Me being the shit. <laughs> I have homosexual tendencies. <laughs> Key word is tendency. Uh, they, they don't happen that often. The last one I had I, it was a while ago. I was looking at Rob Lowe. <laughs> Rob Lowe was on Donahue, right? I mean, he was on the show, and, and I'm sitting there looking at him. And, uh, oh, oh, that's so cheap, man. <laughs> but, okay, Rob Lowe, I'm looking at him. He's got these high cheekbones, very pretty, very pretty, and he just looked cute, and for about a half a second, I went, hey, I wouldn't mind kissing him, you know. <laughs> and then like, then like the other half of my brain went, it's a guy! It's a guy! Calm down, little bobcat! <laughs> Keyword is tendency. I understand that's supposed to be healthy. It's the guys who go, you know, a guy goes, oh, you know. Because, like, I, in the 70s, I used to get beat up a lot because guys uh, would think that I was gay, and so they'd beat me up, which I never, I, I will never understand that phenomenon. I'm, I'm just confused. Guys would just beat me up. They go, hey, fag! Ah, oh, fag, I hate you! Ah, ah, I hate you, fag! And they just beat the shit out of me. I hate you, fag! You know what? You know why I'm hitting you? Because you're such a gay fag. You're gay. You're a fag. <laughs> and I hate you. You and you're and you and you're kind of attractive. <laughs> <laughs> you're a gay fag and you're kind of attractive and I hate you. You know your your skin is kind of soft. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fuck you. But I can hit you. God, it feels good. <laughs> Think of my fist as a penis. I hate you. I hate you. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> well, I think we got that fag a lesson, huh? <laughs> I really don't like the word fag. It's a very ugly word. And uh, I got done with a show once. And this guy came up to me and goes, I don't like boy George. He goes, I don't like boy George. Boy George is a fag. I said, mm, you know, I really don't think you have to worry about that. <laughs> I really don't think Boy George's dream date would be a welder from Glendale. <laughs> I really don't think you're going to be at home going, George, I said no. <laughs> and don't you give Wham my phone number either. <laughs> I got done with 
on this show, and this woman said, came up to me, like, she so came up to me and said, you're really crazy, would you like to come to my house and do some cocaine? <laughs> yeah, like, like, I'm the guy you want wired in your apartment. <laughs> What do you mean you don't have any more pets? <laughs> uh, I was running through an audience one night and this woman grabbed my butt. Now my butt is this big white pimply thing, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, you want a part of that magic. Because I know I never, ever in my entire life had one groupie when I bagged groceries for a living. <laughs> I did horribly in the 70s. Remember that? How relationships would get started in the 70s? Because disco is big, so in order to get a relationship off the ground, one, you had to be handsome, and two, you had to dance very well. Uh, yeah, it was a long time before I got any nookie. <laughs> I was always that guy in the bar. Plus, I'd be liquored up, too. That didn't help, but, you know. And there'd be two women, you know, and, and then I'd be like, you know. And they'd be looking at me, shaking my moneymaker, you know. And they'd be, I'd come over, and they'd be going, oh, God, he's coming over here. Oh, God, he's, oh, he's so queer. He's, he's so queer, and he's coming over here. Uh, come on, ladies. <laughs> Suddenly, they both would have to pee real bad quick. And, it's okay, My theory is that's how punk rock got started. It's just like a bunch of ugly guys in Britain going, man, we're not getting laid. I know we'll start a fucking band. <laughs> so I went to the Beastie Boys concert, and I'm sitting in there, and this, I became my dad. Five minutes into the show, I'm going, what is this? They come out. They, they don't even have any instruments. They got two record players. They're going... <laughs> See, when I was your age, a guy would come out on stage, he would kill a chicken, slit his chest, <laughs> shoot some heroin, not the one of the songs off the album, and uh, that was show business. <laughs> well, Bernard Getz is back in the news. Subway vigilante? First of all, these guys were robbing him with a screwdriver. <laughs> so he shot him. And you know this guy who shot him definitely was heavily into, like, Death Wish. You know, those kind of... You know he's, like, had this gun on him for, like, years going, one of these days, man, one of these days. Somebody's gonna come up to me. And gonna eat my hot lead. You know, and he's just like, mm, got that gun in one of these days. And these guys are getting ready for the crime spree, and they go, let's see, what should we rob someone with? How about this, uh... Hmm, my, my black and decker table saw? <laughs> no, too cumbersome. No, <laughs> what about a screwdriver? I don't even understand why they're robbing him with a screwdriver. I guess, like, in case they got caught, they go, Oh, no, no, no. We, like, you know, somebody was going clackety clack clack, and we were going to, you know, tighten it up, you know. <laughs> Something was wrong, you know. We heard it, you know. They whip out the screw down, they go, give me all your money, and then Gets goes, oh, beauty. Oh, I've been waiting for this whole day. Oh, oh, you know he had like a big boner. He's going, oh. That feels so good. And then he pulls out the gun, and they're going, um, um, give me all your money, or I'm going to make your glasses really, really wobbly. <laughs> Speaking of nuts, Hinckley wrote a book, and you know what the name of his book is? The Day I Shot the President. I was thinking, you know, out of all the days in your life to write a book about, <laughs> he could have wrote, The Day I Went Shopping with Mom and We Had a Really Good Lunch. <laughs> but he chose to write about the shittiest day of his life. The Day I Shot the President. Why don't you just write, The Day I Cooked with an Open Flame on the Hindenburg. <laughs> performance artist castrated himself and he took photographs of it obviously he wasn't holding the camera but he, <laughs> he took photographs of it and he had an art display and I said you know 
There's someone who would be quite upset if, if like, Photomat lost his film. <laughs> if he, you what? No, I don't want another goddamn roll. Something in a dick would be nice. Uh, I, you know, I, I, my friend Lance, he was pregnant at the same time we were. And Lance would call me up. And he'd say, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. Lance calls me up and goes, Bobcat, um, Bobcat, what are you going to do if, it, if it, what are you going to do if it's a girl? Um, you know, Lance, I'm really not thinking about that right now. <laughs> Isn't that going to freak you out? What do you mean, is that going to freak me out? Well, I mean, when, when the first guy who gets your daughter, like, wouldn't that freak you out? No, Lance, that would not freak me out, Lance. You go, oh. First guy who gets your daughter wouldn't bother you at all. I said, no, I hope my daughter experiences everything that there is in life. First guy wouldn't bother you? No, what would? I said, um, number 200. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> I gotta, you, know, you know, someday my daughter, well, my daughter will buy this record, and I'll go, I want my daughter to experience everything. You said it, Dad. <laughs> she keep, I want my daughter to experience everything. I want my daughter. <laughs> Take that record off! <laughs> Where'd you find that thing? <laughs> it was in a car wash. Before my daughter ever came into this world, I went through a very extremely, extremely weird thing. Because people would go to me, they go, because I took acid and a lot of other drugs, and people would come up to me and they go, is it a boy or is it a girl? And I go, um, I don't know. And then they go, well, so long as it's healthy. <laughs> right? And I go, oh, you know, then suddenly I'm going, oh man, I hadn't even thought about that one yet. <laughs> You know, all the drugs I took, you know, the odds were that I was going to have a garbage pail kid, you know. <laughs> a kid with eight arms. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mr. Party. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I'm going, oh, no, oh, no. What if my kid's not healthy, you know? So I'd always hear that, you know. Do you know if it's a boy or girl? Well, no, we haven't opened the package yet, you know. Ha, 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 you know, and all that shit. So... It freaked me out, so I eventually, this sounds really queer and corny, but I, I, I said a prayer. I said, God, this is driving me up the wall. And then I realized, like, maybe if, like, my kid was retarded, maybe that'd be a gift. You know, maybe, like, I have to learn patience and fucking understanding. Or maybe it'd be God's way of saying, hey, why don't you think about something else, fuckhead, besides your fabulous career, you know? So then I have people come up to me and they go, is it a boy or is it a girl? And I say, you know, I don't know what it is, but... Uh, I'll be pretty happy, you know, no matter what it is, as, as long as it's not a, like a yuppie dickhead fuck like you, you know? <laughs> Thanks for encouraging my behavior. <laughs> Good night. Yeah, <laughs>